Hello, this is Jason Fleming. I'm the senior developer for Lilea Media and the author of the Child Theme Configurator. One of the most common support questions that I get is a Child Theme Configurator is not overriding the style. I, I put a change in and it, it's not being changed in the live preview that I'm looking at. Uh, there's a number of reasons why that might happen. In order to really find out what's causing it, you need to rule out the order that the style sheets are being loaded first. So so what we need to do is we need to look at the style sheet handling option that you have here. And if you open this up, you'll see that by default it goes to enqueue parent style sheet. And the vast majority of themes, this method will work fine with the child theme configurator. Basically what it's saying is the child theme enqueues the parent and then the parent enqueues the child style sheet. Um, and that's a normal behavior and it works most of the time. However, if we go back to some of the older themes, Let's look at 2011, for example. You're going to see that the child theme configurer sh shows a uh, warning here saying that a style sheet link tag is hard-coded at the header template. And this is not unusual for older themes. The standard practice at the time was to load the style sheet in the header, and then if you use a child theme, you basically would just import using the at import rule. You would import the parent style sheet directly from the child style sheet, and that was sort of the best practice for a long time until relatively recently. So now hard coding the style sheet is really not the best way to do it because it reduces the flexibility that plugins and themes can have to actually put their own style sheets and other uh, content in that head section using WP and Q scripts, which I'll get into in a different video. I don't want to go into too much detail on that. For this, I just want to show you how to troubleshoot the way that the style sheets are loading and choose the best style sheet handling option for your theme. So we're going to uh, select 2011 for the parent. Um, it automatically generates this 2011 child for the child theme. In uh, style sheet handling, we're going to set this to none. And the reason I'm setting it to none is to get a baseline so we can see what the child theme is doing without any kind of interference by the functions or the actions. So we're set set this to none, select your older theme 2011 and then generate and rebuild. It's going to come back, it's going to say you know it's been generated successfully, you still have your warning but what we can do now is see exactly how it's loading. So let's go over to appearance and themes, use live preview and preview the new child theme that we have here. So under 2011 child, we're going to do live preview, and you're going to notice that there are no styles. It's completely uh, unstyled here, and that's that's actually the behavior we're looking for because we selected none. We're telling Child Theme Configurator not to do anything. We just want to get a baseline and see what it's doing. So in order to know what it's doing, we need to look at the HTML source, and to do that in the live preview, you actually have to load this, the frame source. So go to this frame, because this is loaded in a iframe. Go to this frame, frame source. Um, you don't want to go to view page source because what you'll see there is the source of the entire admin. You just want the frame source. So go to my, this frame, view frame source, and this will load essentially what you would see if you were loading the child theme in a browser. Um, so let's scroll down here, and you're going to see in this head section, in the HTML head, there's some meta uh, stuff, there's a meta viewport here, there's the title, we have a link, and then you see this first link, rel, style sheet, text CSS, media all, href, child theme, our domain here, uh, themes 2011 child, style CSS. Okay, so this is the style sheet, it's being loaded automatically by the theme, it's using the child theme as the, as the directory, which ordinarily would be correct. The only problem is that this is happening before this section down here. And this section down here is actually generated by the WordPress WP head function, which is where plugins and themes can actually queue up their own style sheets to be rendered when the head is displayed by WordPress. And because this is hardwired into the theme header, it's going to load this style sheet before any of this happens, which means that you can't control it. You can't customize it. You can't override it. So what do you do? Well, the child theme configurator gives you the option to enqueue both the parent and the child so that the child theme style sheet will load last. And to do that, let's go back to child themes. 
And instead of using none, now we're going to choose this recommended for this theme, this Encube both parent and child style sheets. And what that's going to do is actually add another link tag in that block of external link style sheets, and it'll put the child theme style sheet after all the other style sheets. So that any changes you make to the child theme style sheet will actually be reflected in the final rendered page. So let's set that. Let's click generate rebuild again. And now what this is going to do behind the scenes is actually adding a new action in the functions file that will enqueue the child theme style sheet. So go over to appearance and themes and look at 2011 again, live preview. And now you're going to see we have our styles. The reason that works is because it's actually enqueuing the parent style sheet first. So it gets all of the parent theme styles, that, the default styles, the styles as the theme was designed. And it's loading the child theme style sheet after that so that any changes you make in the child theme configurator will override the parent. And we can verify that by going to this frame, view frame source. Now you'll see we still have our style sheet link here, but what we're doing is we're actually adding down here another copy of that that will override everything before it. So we have the child team parent CSS here, which happens after the plugins styles. Okay, so the parent will override the plugins, and then the child overrides the parent because it's loaded last. Okay. So if you end up using the enqueue both parent and child style sheets, that means that it's actually creating a new external link for the child style sheet after the one that was in the original theme. So you're going to want to probably remove that original one. And to do that, you can go to the Files tab, check Header, Copy Selected to Child Theme. And that's going to copy the header template into in your child theme so that it'll use that instead of the parent themes version. And then you can just click this link that'll take you over to the theme editor, click on header, and then we're just going to take out where it was pulling in the original style sheet. Now you're editing the child version, so you're not actually making changes to the parent, which means that if you update the parent theme, your child theme won't be affected. So now let's go back and preview. Just like we did before, we're going to this frame, view frame source. Now in the source, we no longer have that hard-coded style sheet link, and the new one is showing up at the end of the block here. So that should fix most of the problems that you might have uh, with changes to your child theme not showing up. Let's go over here and let's look at another example. If you ever see this warning code exist between WP head function and the closing head tag, that should be a red flag that you're dealing with some sketchy code with this theme. And this may or may not be a problem. You need to go in and just check to see how the style sheet's loading. You can try to use the style sheet handling options to uh, fix whatever problems might arise, but you're going to need to look actually look at the code to see what it's doing, um, and just to show you what's going on here. Let's go to the editor. And pull it up. Go to header here. Okay. So if we look at the header, you're going to see you've got your HTML tag. Um, scroll down, you've got some if statements, um, WordPress stuff, and then You've got WP head here, which is usually at the end of the head block, but then it goes on to hard code a bunch of style sheet links, um, and then actually has some more logic here to render additional code after the WP head function. Now, this is especially heinous because that means that there's nothing that WordPress can do to get code in after this hard coded block which also means that it's going to be impossible to override the style sheet using the child theme configurator and any plugin or you know other theme function for that matter so this is my opinion but it's based on troubleshooting child themes for people every day uh, wp head this function should always be the last 
thing to happen before the closing head tag. There's no code so important that it can't be enqueued using WP and Q scripts function or action. So what do we do? Okay. Well, what we can do is we can try to create a child themed version of this head that puts WP head where it's supposed to be. And I'm not going to guarantee that's going to work for this theme, but we're going to try it. So what you do is go back to tools, child themes, and we're going to go to the files tab. We're going to check header, just like we did for 2011. We're going to copy that to child theme, and then we're going to go back over to the editor. Okay, so now we're in White House Child. We're going to hit open the header with a new file we just copied, and we're going to scroll down to where that WP head function call is, cut it, scroll down here to the head, into the head here, it's right here, and we're going to paste it. Okay, the other thing we're going to do is where we have the style sheet link, we're going to actually make it force that to use the parent style sheet, and I'll explain that in a second. So we're going to do uh, instead of this constant we're going to say get template directory URI um, and then style CSS so what will happen is it'll it'll load the core CSS reset the core um, here this other core CSS I'm not sure exactly what they do but they're probably important and then we're going to take the parent templates style sheet as well okay then everything else is going to override that and then the last thing it's going to do is execute that WP head function, including the new child style sheet, so that the child theme configurator can properly create overrides for this theme. Okay, so you need to save that. Now the other thing we're going to do is go back over to Tools, Child Themes, and under Style Sheet Handling, since we just um, added that link to, to the parent, so we don't need to enqueue the parent anymore. We're just going to check enqueue child style sheet. Okay, and then we're going to rebuild here. Okay, so what that does is basically it's going to hard code the parent template, and then it's going to use the enqueue action to load the child theme template. So just to verify that, we're going to go to themes, and we're going to preview this child theme. And so now we have our styles and just this frame, view frame source. So you can see what it's doing here. Um, where we had originally had that child theme um, loading here, it's now loading the parent style CSS. And then it's doing all its crazy logic down here. And then it gets to the WP head where it includes the rest of the plugin style sheets, including the child theme style sheet right here, which is the last thing to load. Okay, so now it'll properly override the the styles. Now the thing to remember here is that because you change that order there may be things that occurred that we weren't expecting. You're just going to have to do that on a case-by-case -case basis and check on it. So anyway, uh, one last thing I want to show you is I want to show you a, a theme that actually does it right. does everything correctly. And this is a theme that um, handles the child theme scenario and the regular uh, parent theme scenario automatically. So we're going to look at responsive here. You're going to see that responsive doesn't have any warnings. It just comes up clean and if we set style sheet handling to none and then generate rebuild, um, let's go and see the parents themes. Let's look at this one. Like preview responsive child. So we don't have any in, uh, style sheet handling set up, but yet it still works. Everything works. So why is that possible? Well, it's because this theme was set up to check to see if it's actually running inside a child theme and adjust the way it enqueues the style sheets accordingly. So if we scroll down here, you're going to see that it actually has responsive style CSS, and that's the responsive core. Um, it's got its own media query style sheet. It's got then it's got its own child style sheet call, which is enqueuing the child responsive child style after the other one. So this is this is all done by the theme itself, um, and this is ideally the way that themes should be handling this this whole operation. Um, child theme configurator, however, in spite of the numerous different ways that themes can set up their child theme style sheets, gives you the options. 
to handle it accordingly. So a couple of other possibilities. You might have a theme that uses the parent style sheet and doesn't have any kind of reference to a child style sheet. That happens from time to time. It's not very common. It's certainly not good practice, but if it happens, you can just check this option and it'll link you the child style sheet. You can also use the old at import method. If all else fails, that'll at least get the parent style sheet into the code, um, but it's uh, it's not ideal. You want to avoid that if you can, but it you know it's there if you want to use it. So hopefully that clears up some of the questions you might have about why the child theme configurer doesn't seem to be letting you override your parent theme. Well, that's about it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, please drop us a line on our website. Uh, you can fill out the contact form or you can send us an email to solutions at lilleamedia.com. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.